All right, so this is going to be our question for today. So originally, when this user posted um, their question, uh, the people that responded thought that he wanted to create this character in three dimensions and have like a full model of all of its shapes. And after talking to him, um, one, that would be a lot of work. And two, it'd be especially tricky, um, given that this image wasn't originally designed to be a 3D reference. Um, it was just designed to look good in two dimensions. So what uh, after talking to him, it sounds like he just wants to do this as um, something that's flat because he's doing it as a stomp pad for a snowboard. And he just wants this um, image to be in three dimensions enough uh, that um, he can get some grip on his board. So we're going to take a look at how I would do this. Um, so first up, we're going to save out this image and then bring it into SolidWorks. My name is Josh and I'm an engineer with Forge Product Development. Forge helps clients start and grow their businesses by providing affordable access to effective engineering resources. Monday through Friday, we offer a free engineering helpline live on our social media platforms, where we help answer questions from people just like you. The clips that follow were taken from one of those sessions. I hope you find it useful and enjoy. So what we did here, and I started working on it. Um, there's so many little facets to this that it was taking a while. So I'm just going to show you um, how I would go about doing it, but not actually complete the project. I'll give you all the information too, and if you have the time to, you're welcome to. Um, but we're just going to cover the steps that you would go through. So first step is you're going to make a sketch on whatever plane you want. Um, and you're going to create uh, a sketch on that plane and then you're going to go to you're going to go to tools and you're going to go sketch tools and you're going to do sketch picture and that will allow you to import this character um, really any image but our reference image into that sketch so then I usually just create um, an individual sketch for that picture so that I can turn it on and off um, independent of all the other sketch um, sketches in my model. Uh, next step, you're going to create a plane and this plane is going to define how tall your spikes are um, or how tall your facets come up to. And I just picked a random distance, but so we make a plane just like we always do. You can hold control, drag up on the plane. It'll give you some offset and then you just select whatever offset you want like I said, this second plane that we're creating is going to be the high points of this of the um, of the image. So next off, we're going to make another sketch and we're going to create sketches on the two planes that we have. So we're using the front plane and then this additional plane that we have here. I'll show them for just a second. And we're going to use those to create a high point sketch and a low point sketch. So you can see here, I've changed the colors of them. So my orange points are all on one plane and the blue points are all on one plane. My orange points are gonna be the top, um, the high points, and my blue points are gonna be low. And then basically the process is pretty simple. Um, you're gonna go into these sketches, make sure that you're oriented the right way, and you're just gonna drop points on them for example, say I wanted this to be a high point. I just put a point right here. And then I go into my low point sketch and then you're going to um, create reference marks for your low points. So say this is my high point. These are already low points. So we'll say that this is a low point. These are low points. And we're just making, say it comes all the way over here maybe. We're just making uh, points on two different planes. And then what we can do is we can make a 3D sketch and you can see the one that I've already started here. Well, you make a 3D sketch and then when you connect those points in the 3D sketch, so we'll connect all the low points and then we'll go back in and we'll tie those low points to the high points. Now it looks like we're just doing this in two dimensions because of our orientation, but you'll see when I turn the model, what we've actually done 
is we've created this pyramid type image or uh, feature. And then what we do, as you can see, I mean, obviously you can put more points in there. I'm just abbreviating for time to show the process. Um, but what we've done is we've kept that faceted shape and we've defined three um, edges and those edges can then be used to create faces. So we have our 3D sketch. The next step in the process is going to be to go in and fill in all these triangles that we've created. So the way that I found or the best way I found to do that is you're going to go into filled surface. And you won't be able to select um, the whole 3D sketch because it's it's going to want you to try or it's going to want to select the entire 3D sketch. So the trick is you're going to right click and you're going to start contour selection. And then if you hover over um, the edges within that 3D sketch, it'll pick up uh, just closed loops. So now we have a closed loop. You can see that's created that surface there. We exit, hit the check mark, and now we have a surface. So now we just repeat the process. Filled surface, right click, start contour, select. And we just go around the model and repeat our process. Now, I've done, I started doing this up here and I can turn on the surfaces that I made up here. And as you can see, they follow the sketches that we created and those sketches were based on the low poly art. So you get the exact same feature and look. Now, once you go through and you make all of the uh, individual surfaces, you'll want to knit them together. So I'll just show how to do that. So you're going to use knit surface, select all of your open surfaces that or our individual and then that will create one knit surface body and you can see that more clearly if we turn off the 3d sketch now we can hide these points too so now we have a body that is these you can see these surface are jo surfaces are joined together at their edges because the edges are not black same up here so these black edges are all joined together. So once the entire thing has been mapped out and filled in, um, what I would do is probably create a, uh, a sketch that has the, where did I put it right here? I would create a sketch that uses your 3D sketch as a reference and then convert all the edges that go all the way around and then use that as an extrude thin command to just kind of border all of your surfaces. And then you'll want to convert your surfaces into solids. Once everything's knit together, you'll be able to convert the, all those individual surfaces into a solid what, using the knit com surface command. Right here, create solid. And that's once everything's created. Uh, and then you can just use combine and combine it with your um, your edge frame feature. And then that will create one solid that has all of your um, high and low points and all your poly art uh, design in here. Um, and you can use then that solid in the larger design of your uh, your stomp pad. So that's how I would do it. How would I how I would convert your um, poly art into something that's kind of 2D uh, or kind of 3D. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to stop by the channel and ask. I'd be happy to help. Um, please uh, subscribe and like to help support the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.